Can you do a real mail merge inside of DocuSign? The answer is yes and no, it kind of depends. And in this video, I will show you why I'm saying this and how you can do it anyways. But first, let's define what a real mail merge is. For me, a real mail merge is when a document is automatically created and looks like it's been typed in Word. It basically looks like this offer letter. It looks pretty perfect, right? In a previous video, I showed you how you can use DocuSign to generate documents by connecting your data to your DocuSign templates. And that's what the offer letter looked like. Here you can see that the DocuSign generated letter has a little too much white space between the static and the variable text. And also the variable text is not 100% aligned with the rest of the text, horizontally speaking. The first one is what I call a true mail merge, a real mail merge. Now DocuSign alone cannot do a real mail merge, but this video will show you how you can do it anyways. And if we haven't met before, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm the founder of Solution Consulting. We help businesses save thousands of hours each month using document automation. If you want the help of a team to set up automation, you can find the link in the description of this video to book a complimentary strategy session with me or you can also enroll in our document workflow automation program to learn how you can build those automations yourself. But for now, let's see how to do a real mail merge using DocuSign. You will have to use an additional piece of software to do the merge that integrates with DocuSign. The software that I personally like to use is called DocuPilot and its pricing is reasonable and it's very easy to use. If you scroll down in the description, you'll find a link to get 10% off your subscription or you can also use the code Solusign 10 when you sign up. Now, let's talk about the three steps you'll need to follow to generate your real mail merge with DocuSign. So the first thing you'll want to do is to build a document template inside of Word or Google Docs, it doesn't matter. Second, you'll want to use that document template to build a DocuPilot template. But don't worry, it's not complex. You basically just need to upload a document inside of the, your DocuPilot account. And once that's done, you'll want to integrate DocuPilot with DocuSign. Again, super simple. Just need to put your credentials. I'll walk you through all the steps right now. The first step consists of preparing your document template directly inside of Word or Google Doc. Here, what I've done is I've basically added placeholders that will be replaced by the data that I want to merge in my document. So I've done this for all my documents. So you can see here I've got the date, salutation, first name, last name, city, state, zip. I've got all the data points that I want to merge inside of my documents. And I've also added some additional field placeholders that have changed the color from black to white. Since I'm not using a DocuSign template, there's no way for me to add the DocuSign field inside of my document. So what I'm using are called anchor tags. And so those anchor tags will tell DocuSign where I want my DocuSign field to go to inside of my DocuSign envelope. And so I don't want to show these obviously to the signers, but I want DocuSign to be able to pick it up. So I add them and I hide them by making them white. And also you want to add field in email placeholder. This is just so that DocuSign will be able to pick this up, but it won't be shown to your recipient. So once you've configured your document template in Word or in Google Docs, the next step will be for you to go inside of DocuPilot. And so in DocuPilot, you'll want to create a new template and just upload your document. Once you've uploaded the document, DocuPilot will scan through these and then will pick up all the different fields that you've added. Each placeholder for your merge field should have a meaningful name so that it's easy for you to understand what data you're expecting in there. And you also need to place them in between four squiggly brackets. Once you've done that, you want to configure the delivery as a DocuSign delivery. So this basically means that every time a document will be merged using this template, it will be sent for signature through DocuSign. And so that's very simple. You'll just need to add a new DocuSign account here, enter your credentials, configure your email subject and message if you want. And here you can configure your recipients. You can add as many as you want and you just need to add the first and last name using those merge fields and the email using the email field that you've added and made white inside of your document. Once that's done, you can just save and then you can start to create your document merges. You will want to connect your database, so wherever you have your information saved, to DocuPilot. And the way that I like to set up this integration is using Zapier. Zapier will basically take the data, wherever you have it saved, whether it's Google Sheets or Airtable or Excel, and send it to DocuPilot, which will then send the document for signature 
through to DocuSign automatically. And if you're not familiar with how to use Zapier with DocuSign, I recommend that you download my document automation cheat sheet where I've outlined the steps you need to follow to create your document automated workflows using Zapier. Now, before I walk you through how to set up your Zap, let me just show you how things are supposed to be working once they've set up. Let's just say that here I've got this person. Let's just go with Dr. Gonzalez. So I've got my data about this person. They need to receive an offer letter. We have the salary information. We have their address. We have their position. We have everything. What I want is to send them contract, an offer letter by the click of a button. So I'll go here and I'll go send. What's happening in the back end is that Zapier is picking up that I've clicked on send. You can see here the contract status has changed to sending. This means that as I'm speaking now, the data of my Airtable database is being sent using Zapier and then DocuPilot is sending it to DocuSign for signature. This can take a couple of minutes to happen. So while this is happening, I'm going to show you how I've set up my Zap. So the first thing you'll want to do inside of Zapier is to configure your app trigger. And so since I want to be able to generate my documents from Airtable, my trigger app is going to be Zapier. And the action that's going to be the trigger is when whether a new or updated record in Airtable is either created or updated. If this is true, if one of those two things happen, then I want Zapier to pull the data from that Airtable record that I've updated. And then I want to tell Zapier to create a new document using a DocuPilot template. And here in my setup action, I just had to select my document template inside of Airtable. So my director contract, that's the template. And once I've selected my template, I get the list of fields inside of my template. And here I just need to map them with my Airtable records. So here I get a drop down with all my Airtable fields and I simply need to match them with my DocuPilot fields. When that's done, I can also set up an animation that updates the record from send to sent so that I know that the document has actually been sent. And so that should actually have happened by now. So let's go back to Airtable and see what the status of the document is. And we can see that the contract status is set to sent, which means that the document has been sent. Let's go to my emails and see what's happening in there. So I've got my document here. If I click on the envelope, all the variables inside of my DocuPilot template have been replaced by the information stored inside of my Airtable database. So if I click on sign and finish, then soon Zapier will pick up the fact that this envelope has been signed and will update my record inside of Airtable. Now I'm using Airtable for the purpose of this demo, but if your information was stored in Google Sheets or Excel online, that would also be totally fine. Now I showed you how to automate the creation and distribution of the envelope, but in this second zap, what I'm doing is every time an envelope is completed inside of DocuSign, I also want this envelope to update my Airtable record so that the status of the contract changes from sent to completed. So what I'm telling DocuSign to do is please let me know when something Thing is completed so that I can find which Airtable record I want to update using the email address of the person who is signing the document and then I can update my Airtable record and change the status from sent to completed. But I'm also adding the PDF to the Airtable record. And if I wanted to push this even further, I could also automatically create a folder inside of Google Drive and upload the PDF in there. Now let's go back to our table to see if the status has changed. And so you can see here the status says completed. And if I scroll through here, I have my DocuSign document that's been completed directly inside of my database. Now, if you want the help of a team to help you set this up, you can either book a complimentary strategy session with me, or you can also enroll my document workflow automation programs that will help you automate all the document workflows you can think of. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy signing.